Hear that behind me, nature enthusiasts? Sierra and tree frogs. Sierra and tree frogs are this really cute species. Really small, two inches at most, tiny little frogs. Um, but they're amazing. Just listen to them back there. So behind me, this is a little marsh. I know you can't see it in the dark, but it's there. And it's just loaded with these frogs. Now, how do you know you're looking at a sea and tree frog if you ever find one? They are small, like I said, two inches at most, usually smaller than that. They are brown or green. Interesting side note, they can change color. Over the course of the seasons, they actually change color to match their environment. So they usually go from a brighter green to sort of a more brown as the year goes by. But the really way you know you're looking at a sea and tree frog is that they have this dark brown, even black line that goes right from their nose through their eye to the back of their head. And they are the most commonly heard frog in Central California. Almost all the time when you hear frogs, like you'll hear sea and tree frogs. And they're really pretty that either green or brown color they have uh, is really lovely colors and oftentimes they'll have sort of some modeling you know some patterning which is really pretty and they have all sorts of vocalizations what you're hearing back behind me is a classic for spring male sierra and tree frogs chorusing calling for females to attract them in one of the things that makes these frogs amazing is A, that call sounds like they're a much bigger frog than they are. They sound big, even though they're actually pretty small. Another thing is just how adaptable they are. I mean, I said that they are the most commonly heard frog in California, and that's because they can live in such a wide range of habitats. They can live in meadows, in forests, they can live in suburban and urban areas, almost anywhere where there's some wet area with some vegetation, so some plants, some wet plants, and the water quality is pretty good, they'll be there. For example, this marsh, this little marsh right behind me, is in the heart of suburbia. Um, there is a pretty major street that way, and actually just back that way, there's a high school, and then back behind me, um, a few hundred yards, there is a housing um, development, so residential neighborhoods. Um, but tucked in between all of that human activity and influence and impact is this little patch of habitat, and sure enough, the sea urn tree frogs have found it, and they're loving it in there. It's fun to listen to them. They kind of roll in this pattern where it's quiet for a while. Like right now it's actually pretty quiet. But then it starts to build where one frog starts to call and then another starts to call and another and another and more and more and more until you have this really raucous cacophonous chorus going on. And it stays that way for a little while, but then it starts to die off with frog after frog kind of going quiet, quieter and quieter and the whole marsh quiets down. They're ramping up right now. Pretty fantastic. Another interesting thing about these frogs is that they are so abundant that they actually are a very important food source for many species. In particular, garter snakes, which are a very common snake in California, um, eat a lot of aquatic prey. So they eat a lot of fish, 
but they also eat a lot of sea air and tree frogs. They're a very important food source for garter snakes and many other species as well. So pretty fun, pretty exciting uh, species to come out and spend some time with. If you have a chance to find a pond or something like that, come out a little after sundown, especially in the spring and especially just after a rain. And you will, in all likelihoods, be treated to quite the lovely chorus of Sierra and Tree Frog calling, looking for mates. Pretty wonderful animals. Thanks for the view. Subscribe to the channel. Until next time, enjoy the natural world.